Hi, everybody. I'm Rick Warren, pastor of Saddleback Church here in Southern California, author of The Purpose Driven Life. And welcome to 40 Days of Prayer. You know, over the last 40 years, I have the opportunity of traveling to about 160 plus nations around the world. One of the things I've found that's universal is you can find an ocean eventually connected to every continent. Something else I've noticed is that on every one of those continents, people pray. It's an inborn instinct in every human being. Now, they may not pray to the one true God. They may pray to an idol. They may pray to ancestors. They may pray uh, to themselves, but everybody prays. Why is it? Because we were made in God's image and we were given the ability to communicate to God. Cows don't pray, dogs don't pray, ants don't pray, only human beings. In all of God's creation in the universe, only human beings pray. It is our greatest privilege and it is our greatest responsibility. And so for the next 40 days, we're going to look at how to do what God wired you to do. We're gonna learn how to pray in different kinds of circumstances. We're gonna learn some of the barriers to prayer, some of the uh, ways to see God's answers to prayer, some of the ways to be persistent in praying, and all of these as we looked at the pattern of prayer that Jesus gave us. It's gonna be a great experience together, and I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. Hello, everybody, and welcome to 40 Days of Prayer. Did you know that prayer was God's idea? If he didn't want to hear from you, he wouldn't have made you the way he did. God created you to pray. It's really part of your human makeup. Everybody prays. But we don't all pray to the same God. Some people pray to idols. Some people pray to their dead ancestors. Some people pray to some kind of cosmic force. The followers of Jesus Christ, we pray to the living God, our creator, our healer, our provider, our savior, our heavenly father, and our friend. You know, prayer is so simple that even a child can do it. So why is it that we as adults struggle so often not knowing how to pray? You know, we have a hard time knowing what to say or how long to keep praying about something. And we, we wonder about the kind of prayers that God answers. What kinds of things can we pray about? How do I know that God hears me when I pray? How do I know that God even cares? And what is the secret to answers to prayer? Well, for the next 40 days, we're going to focus on your personal prayer life, and we're gonna answer these tough questions. We're going to learn how to pray in a crisis. We're going to learn how to pray for a breakthrough, for renewal in your life. We're gonna pray uh, and we're gonna look at the, the parts of prayer like fasting and why sometimes we need to keep on praying persistently, sometimes for years, before we see the answer that we've, we've been asking for. Now, by the end of this 40 days of study, you'll be praying with more confidence, I'm sure of this, and with greater faith than you've ever had before. So, are you ready? Are you ready for God to add his power to your prayer life? Then let's get started now. Now in this session, I wanna talk about the purpose of prayer. Why do we pray? And why is prayer so important to God? Why always determines how, when, and how long. It's the most important part of prayer, knowing why you pray. Now remember, prayer is God's idea. If he didn't wanna hear from you, he wouldn't invite you to pray. God wants to hear from you because he loves you. And he cares about every critical detail of your life. There is nothing too big or too small for his attention. In John chapters 14 to 16, Jesus was giving his final instructions to his disciples before he went to the cross. And seven times in this last conversation with those he loved the most, he talked about prayer. Now in this passage, Jesus gives us four primary purposes for prayer. You might wanna write these down uh, in your study guide because they explain why we pray. First, Jesus teaches us that prayer is an act of dedication. Prayer is an act of dedication. Prayer is an opportunity to express our devotion, our dedication to God and our dependence upon God. 
It is an act of dedicating ourselves and saying, God, I need you. I'm looking to you for the answers. I'm counting on you, Lord. I'm dedicated to you. Now, do you know what's the biggest hindrance to prayer in your own life? It's pride. It's pride. It's, it's self-sufficiency. We think we can do everything ourselves, so we don't feel a dependence upon God. We don't think we need his help. And ever since Adam and Eve, we have vastly overestimated our own abilities. We think, you know, I, I don't need to pray because I can handle my problems myself. Really? How's that working out for you? I mean, really, how's that working out for you? If you're going to pray, it's going to cost you your pride. You have to be honest to God and admit, I'm inadequate, I'm, I'm helpless, I need your help in this situation. And as long as you think you're self-sufficient, as long as you think you've got it all together, prayer is not gonna have much meaning for you. But somebody once said, it's only when you come to the end of yourself that you come to the beginning of God. So prayer is an act of dedication. It's a dedication of our dependence upon God. It's saying, Father, I'm declaring my declaration of dependence. Not independence, dependence. It's our way of saying, this proves that I'm depending on you. The more you pray, the more dependent you're gonna be on God. The less you pray, the more dependent you're gonna be on yourself. Now in John 15, Jesus was talking about dependence when he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Notice not a little, he says nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. But if you remain in me, in other words, if you stay dependent upon me and my words remain in you, you can ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. Now that's like a blank check from God. He says, if you really put your dependence in me, you can ask whatever you will and I will give it to you. That's an incredible promise in prayer. But it's all based on dedication to God, staying connected to him like a branch on a vine. Now here's the second purpose or reason for prayer. Prayer is an act of communication. Most of our problems in life, if you think about it, are communication problems, right? I mean, communication with your spouse, your wife or your husband, your parents, your friends, communication in your business. In fact, most of the problems in life come from poor communication. The Bible actually says that. You can't understand anyone, your spouse or anybody else, unless you communicate with them. Now the same is true with God. You can't understand God. You can't know God's will for your life unless you communicate with him. So it's vital in your personal spiritual life that you learn to communicate with and to God. Prayer is an act of dedication. It shows my dependence. And prayer is an act of communication. It shows I'm in contact. Now you can't know how to communicate with somebody unless you know your relationship to them. Think about this. You can't know the right way to communicate unless you know the relationship to the people you're trying to communicate with. So let's ask this question. What is our relationship to God? Well, um, in John 15, Jesus says this. This is one of the most amazing verses in the Bible. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I've learned from my Father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Do you think about that verse? Jesus says the reason you can ask anything in prayer is because we're friends with him. Isn't that amazing? That the God who created the entire universe says, I don't wanna treat you like servants. I don't wanna treat you like slaves. I wanna treat you as friends. Now, we have an even greater invitation than that. If that was enough, God just says, you're my friend, you can have access to me anytime. We have an even greater invitation than that. In this exact same passage, you are invited to converse with the creator of the universe, and that's going straight to the top. 
In other words, you're not working with some little bureaucrat in heaven. You're not going through an intermediary, an ambassador. You don't need a middleman in your relationship with God. God says, I'm the king of kings. I'm the Lord of lords. And you're my friend. So you have direct access to the throne room. And I want to talk to you. That's what prayer is. What a privilege. Let me give you the third why, the third reason, the third purpose of prayer. Prayer is an act of supplication. Supplication is a Bible word that simply means make a request. Uh, in the book of Philippians, the Bible says, do not be anxious about anything, don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the result, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now get this, when you learn supplication in prayer, how to ask, how to make a request, the result of your supplications or your asks, your request in prayer, will be peace of mind. Doesn't that sound good? In John 16, Jesus says, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. He says, until now, you've not asked for anything in my name, but ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Did you get that? Motivation is he wants you to be full of joy. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to have a great relationship to God. God says, you're going to be happy because you're going to ask and I'm going to answer. Wow. The fact of the matter is prayer is God's chosen method of meeting your needs. That may be one of the more profound things that I say. It's very simple, but let me say it again. God's chosen method of meeting your needs is through prayer. Now the Bible teaches us that there's some things that God has promised to do only if we pray. Some people think, well, you know, I, I, God knows what I need. He knows what I need even before I know it. So I don't need to ask. He'll just give me what I need when I need it. You know what? That's not true. Because God's more interested in relationship to you than he is in meeting your needs. And God has decided to set it up in his plan that there are some things he's only going to do in your life if you ask him. There are some things he's only going to do in your life is if you pray and make a supplication, make a request. James says it this way, you do not have, you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. In other words, you have not because you ask not. Over 20 times in the New Testament, the Bible commands us to ask in prayer. The Bible says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open. I will do whatever you ask in my name. Ask, seek, knock, and keep on asking. Over 20 times we're told in the Bible to ask God in prayer. That's called supplication. The very famous pastor, Charles Spurgeon, who was uh, a pastor of a large church in London in the, in the 19th century, he once said this, God never shuts his storehouse until you shut your mouth. In other words, you don't have because you don't ask. You have to ask. Prayer is an act of dedication, it's an act of uh, communication, and it's an act of supplication. It's asking. So I need you to ask more in prayer. We're gonna teach you how to do this in 40 days of prayer. What are you lacking right now in your life? Simply because you've never asked God for it. You know, I've tried a lot of other things, but you've never just stopped and said, uh, God, can I have this? Would you give this to me? Would you make this possible? What situation? What can you ask for? Well, I'll tell you what the Bible says to ask for. It says ask for what you want. Psalm 145 verse 19 says this. He fulfills the desires of those who reverence and trust him. Notice, not just the needs, the desires. He fulfills the desires. Why? Because if you reverence for God, because if you reference him, meaning you trust him with all your heart, that dependence part, then your desires are gonna be right. Psalm 37, four is another amazing promise. It says this, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
There's that word desires again. If you're delighting yourself in God, you're saying, God, I want you more than anything. I, I wanna know you. You're trying the best you know how to let God's spirit live in you and live through your life. Then your desires are gonna be in line with his will. So he says, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Now in Matthew chapter seven, Jesus says, which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? That, that would be child abuse. Of course, no loving parent would do that. And he says, if you then, though you are evil, we're an imperfect parent. Uh, you know how to give your good gifts to your children. How much more will your father in heaven, who's perfect, will give good gifts to those who ask him? God actually delights in answering our requests, so ask. Now, let's review. First we said, uh, the purpose of prayer is it's an act of dedication, okay? It's expressing dependence on God. It's an act of communication. It's the way I make connection with God. It's the way God has chosen to build our relationship. It's an act of supplication, which is how I communicate my needs and my desires to God. Finally, number four, prayer is an act of cooperation. Now, this is the most exciting thing about prayer, and you may have never even heard this or talked about it. It's an act of cooperation. Now, God has sovereignly chosen that we get to cooperate in his plan by praying for his will to be done right here on earth. We cooperate with God's plan through prayer. Prayer is God's way of letting us partner with him to accomplish his purposes on earth. This is an amazing promise. Probably the most amazing verse in the Bible is John 14, 12, where Jesus says this, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Now, I have to admit uh, that if there's any verse in the Bible that I have ever had a hard time believing, it's that verse. Uh, because I didn't see myself doing greater things than Jesus would do, and you certainly probably didn't either. Now, how in the world could that even be possible? I honestly had a hard time accepting that verse until one day I read the verse right underneath it, and then all of a sudden, it made sense. The next verse, Jesus says this, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Bingo, that's the answer. How is it possible to do greater miracles than Jesus Christ? Well, it's real simple. Because when Jesus Christ was here on earth, he voluntarily limited himself by becoming a human being. He could only be in one place at one time. So he could only do one miracle at a time while he's in one place. So he was limited to the miracles within the vicinity of where he was. Jesus didn't do any miracles in India or China when he was here on earth. But prayer is not limited by time. It's not limited by space. Your prayers can influence nations. They can, you can shoot off a prayer like a, a ballistic missile and then go anywhere in the world. You can touch people on the other side of the planet. Your prayers, as I said, are like these little missiles. They release the power of God into even the most hopeless situations and, and the most difficult places. Prayer can penetrate that. You might not be able to go to that place, but you can send a prayer there and you can affect a man or a woman uh, in a country that's closed or has a hardened heart uh, of a skeptic, whatever, prayer makes the impossible possible. So prayer really is limitless in its power. People may reject your appeals to come to know Jesus Christ. They may reject your ar arguments. They may reject your logic. They, they may even reject you as a person. But people are totally defenseless against your prayers. Have you ever realized that? They've got no defense system because your prayers can go straight to the heart of an individual. The Bible says this, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord 
and he directs it like a water course wherever he pleases. In other words, just like a river, God can change the course of a person's life and he can even change the course of history through your prayers. Wow. Did you know that seven times in John chapter 14, 15, and 16, Jesus' final words to his disciples before he goes to the cross, he says, if you will ask, I will answer. If you will ask, I will do. He says, your part is the asking, and my part, God's part, is the doing. <laughs> now that's great, because he's in a whole lot better position than you are to make things happen, right? He, he has a few more strings he can pull, a few more resources at his command. God says, if you pray, I will do. I will act on your behalf. This is the cooperation part of prayer. Our part in cooperating with God's plan in the world is through prayer. So the most important thing you can do in your Christian life is talk to God. It's pray as an act of dedication and communication and supplication and now cooperation. Now that's why we're studying prayer for the next 40 days. I can't think of another subject that has a greater possibility to change your life, do miracles in your life, see breakthroughs, have renewal uh, in any area of your life. It'll give new hope to your life. That's why we're starting this whole season with 40 days of prayer. Now, you may need a breakthrough in your marriage. You need, uh, maybe you need a breakthrough in your health. Maybe you need a breakthrough in your finances. I have no doubt some people listening need a breakthrough in their job or their career or in a relationship. It's stuck. And breakthroughs always begin with prayer. So hope and prayer go together. Renewal and prayer go together. Let me ask you a very personal question. What are you lacking in your life right now? Simply because you failed to ask God for it. You've never asked. What breakthrough do you need? The answer is one word, ask, A-S-K, ask. God says ask. Now maybe you've never had an answer to prayer before. Well, I don't want you to miss out on this. So I, I want you to right now, everybody who's just listening to me, Think of one specific thing that you can pray for, that you can ask God for. And the more specific it is, the more detailed it is, actually the easier it is for you to see God answer it. So what's most floating through your mind? What's the uppermost concept on your mind right now? What's got you worried? What's your greatest need right now? You say, well, you think God would be interested in that? Delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. What is it that you'd like to ask God for? Just right now, let something pop into your mind because I believe that of the thousands of people listening to this right now in all kinds of different situations, that God wants to answer your prayer. And I believe that God is going to answer your prayers in many, many different ways in the next 40 days. I hope your hope is building up in you right now because we're gonna believe God together to answer your personal request. I really believe that of all the series that I've taught in purpose-driven uh, lessons and courses and curriculum, that this series can change your life forever. So are you ready? You ready to ask? You ready to enter a new level of prayer? Let's pray together, okay? Why don't you just bow your heads right now and I'm gonna pray uh, with you and for you. Now, with your head bowed, just pray this uh, in your heart. Father, I want to see breakthroughs happen in my life. Miracles, things that can't be explained by my own effort. There are areas of my life that I've lost hope. There are areas of my life where I need renewal. There are areas of my life where I need a breakthrough, a miracle. And I want to see impossible situations made possible through prayer. Now God has given many promises that we've looked at just in this first session. We'll look at many more. But because God has made these promises, I want you to ask right now. Just say this, right now, Father, 
I ask you for, and you fill in the blank. Say, Father, right now, because of your promises, I ask you for, and then make your request to God. I don't want you to miss out on this. Now I want you to pray, Lord, help me to believe that you will answer my prayer because I pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Now, as you go to your discussion time, I wanna encourage you to do two things. And we're gonna do this in each of these sessions. I believe God put you in this small group so that you can pray for each other and with each other. So for the next 40 days, I, I'm gonna ask you to pray every day for the request you have just thought of. And then I wanna ask you to pray every day for each other in your group. And if you feel confident in, in sharing your request, do that with others. If you don't, that's okay. We just know that everybody in your group has made a request to God. Let's believe together that we're gonna see breakthroughs, new hope, and new renewal in each other's lives. Thanks for joining me in this first session. Have a great discussion time, and I'll see you in our next session. God bless you.